guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome, Cross Watchers. Welcome those of you who are brand new to the channel. Happy to have you join us. Um, I am pulling from Healing Waters, uh, Rebecca Campbell. It's new to me. I just got it, so you're the first sign. I'm using it for lucky you. And um, this whole series of readings, because we have the new moon in Virgo, happy new moon, and I uploaded that reading as well as the September 2024 Love Tarot Monthly Energy Update where I take the month week by week. Those two readings are for all zodiac signs. So if you miss them, they're very recent. Go watch them. And um, this particular new moon kicks off. It's not an eclipse, but it is connected to, uh, begins a lunar cycle where we will begin the eclipse season. The um, full moon coming up on the 17th of September is in the sign of Pisces and it is an eclipse. So we have very watery energy and Virgo is a very healing sign. And then Pisces contains the soul contracts and soulmates and um, all of that good energy. So I grabbed this Healing Waters deck in time for this series of readings. Let's get you a card to activate this reading. Ride the waves. Life lessons and growth. You will get through this. I love that. So perfect. Yes. A perfect message, like for all of us, but there you go. Life lessons and growth. You will get through this. Um, yeah, this, this is one of those. I mean, the month in general, as all months do, has, has some ups and downs, nothing like August, uh, greatly improved. But this lunar cycle, even though the new moon in Virgo is kind of calm-ish, it's kind of kicking off eclipse season. And the full moon in Pisces will be emotional just by its watery nature. And it, it's tapping, it, it's a south node eclipse. The nodes of the moon are what create eclipses. And so we will be having to, we'll release ish from the past. I know. So what I'm going to do is pull this spread. It looks just like my normal modified Celtic cross, but the positions are, the positions of the cards are different. So I'll tell you what they are and then we'll clarify. Okay. Nature of your karmic soul contract, king of cups, your main lesson, magician. You got a whole lot more power than you think you have in this situation. Wow, the, um, you are already aware of this death card, which is something needs to change. It's about growth, life lessons, growth change, transformation, some shadow work still needed. There's still possibly some um, energies around what comes off the tongue uh, in anger or temper. Um, maybe something was said, has been said, needs to be said. Okay. Um, past healing already accomplished. Good. Okay. So maybe, um, maybe you have said your apologies. Okay. But maybe someone hasn't said theirs. So some past healing that has already been accomplished. Um, the page of cups, words that are sincere, messages from the heart. Um, possibly from, you know, messages of sincerity, of apology, of love. And the final step on the healing journey for you that signals you will be ready to either, if need be, cut cords or to step up to the next level in your soul contract. The tower is about, for you, for this particular point in your spread, um, the fi final step is to recognize what isn't sustainable and then deal with it in the moment not to let it linger so that the whole freaking house of cards falls down. So that's what I think the meaning of this is. Because you, are, this is what you're already aware of, is something needing to change, okay? Not something needing to end necessarily, but something needing to change so that it all doesn't come crashing down. Okay, got it. I have my assignment. All right, King of Cups and the Magician. Your main lesson in dealing with someone who may struggle to express their feelings, may be a little bit uh, emotionally unavailable at times. Um, your main lesson is about your sense of mastery. 
And the reason why is because this Five of Swords leads me to believe you often feel easily defeated. All right? Um, almost like you can't deal with the fact that you have power in the situation. And instead of acting on that power, you easily go to a sense of defeat. Okay, Laura, you can hold these cards. Let me just get them all so I want you to be able to see it. And then we have the Two of Wands. And then we have the Six of Pentacles. Right? In this soul contract, it is about give and take. It can't be one-sided. And so part of this soul contract and your lesson is about understanding your sense of mastery. And Two of Wands is knowing what you want, being clear about that path. And so you will have to give voice to that. It will be about, you know, expressing, hey, this is a two-way street. And I'm all, all about being here in a way where we can give back and forth to each other where it's, we're both invested in the same thing on an emotional level, because it's the King of Cups. If it was the King of Wands, I'd have a different thing to say about it. But this, the nature of your karmic soul co contract is about being with somebody that's emotionally available, okay? And that can give as well as receive. And part of your main lesson is that you have more power in the situation than you give yourself credit for. Um, and, and how easily defeated you often, like you shrink, you shrink back. And maybe you don't say what it is you need to say. So what you're already aware of is the death card. <laughs> okay, so you see it clearly that something needs to change. And, and maybe you've been very patient because... You see this, this as the love of your life or maybe the one and um, you don't want to um, perhaps create a situation where things fall apart. But if you know that something needs to change and you're planting those seeds of intention now, it isn't going to happen by itself is what I'm trying to say. There are actions that need to be taken. So when you're setting intentions, and that's what I think I'm seeing happening here. Um, the Seven of Pentacles is a card of patience, but it's also, as we are here right now, from this new moon to the full moon, that's what this whole series of readings is about from Aries through Pisces. I'm going to get to each sign is you're setting intentions that when we get to the full moon, you got to release whatever's in the way. And you can't just, it's not bewitched. We're not twitching our nose and then all of a sudden the change occurs. So there will need to be steps taken. You're already aware, you see very clearly that something needs to change. You got the patience going for you, awesome. Because you do recognize this as a powerful connection, a gift from spirit, great. But set some intentions that you can sort of reclaim your sense of mastery to manifest something more reciprocal. Okay, got it. Shadow work still needed. Knight of Swords. You're right. Lots of worry. You kind of trip over your tongue, get tongue tied. Um, possibly very emotional. It, you, lots of old wounds likely get triggered. Um, yeah, you need some healing around this. I have a feeling that you may um, have worries about um, having a fight, right? Saying the wrong thing. Because I'm seeing, I'm going to get here in a minute, but I'm seeing in the past part of um, your past healing that you've already accomplished is your ability to speak from the heart in a sincere way, to um, offer an apology if something is said um, out of turn or in a way that you didn't intend. But I'm not sure that this person either has that capacity or has demonstrated it. And you may have some fears around that. Or you may have some experience where you, know, you get tongue-tied when tempers start to rise. So this is definitely some shadow work that you need to 
continue with. Okay, because you, I'm seeing lots of worry. Uh, the Nine of Swords, the Seven of Cups, those two things so close together is a little bit of situational anxiety and depression, right? And I'm saying situational, I'm not diagnosing anybody. I'm just saying with the Four of Swords right in between it, and that it's, it's hard to clear the air if you're kind of riding the highs and lows of right, your own um, emotional disposition. So that might be something to focus on a bit to make, a, make it more of a priority. Let's see that page of cups in the past. And in case you haven't checked my bio, I, I do have di doctoral level training in psychotherapy. So I say it for a reason. Okay. Ten, oh, wow, yes. So there have been breakdowns before in this connection. And you do have evidence um, that you can come through it. Uh, you do have the evidence that the past healing Right? You've been able to kind of come back from the brink. If there's been something kind of heavy that you couldn't handle anymore and there's been a painful ending, you have been able to bring about the change, growth and transformation that was needed and to speak from the heart, to speak from, uh, sincerely, offer your apologies if they were warranted, maybe receive an apology if it was offered. So you have evidence that this connection when things have been you know when you uh, backs against the wall or things have kind of gone south you have evidence is what i'm trying to say that you know how to kind of take accountability and make sure that your side of the street is clean okay now going forward the final step on this healing journey at this point that will signal that you're ready to take your contract to the next level is this tower. Mm -hmm. There's the star, devil, and the queen of swords. Almost as if you won't have to have this tower moment. We won't have to keep having uh, the breakdown and the apology and then the breakthrough and the breakdown and the apology and then the breakthrough there it will be an awareness that the ground is not you know is shaking beneath your feet that there are cracks in the foundation and then comes this energy of some healing of fragile egos healing of the fear healing of whatever it is that tends to keep you small because that's what I'm seeing here I'm seeing with, right, because your main lesson is that sense within you that says, I don't feel masterful, so I quit, so I, I feel defeated, I feel overpowered. Um, and that's what that devil is, is a sense of over, being overpowered. And so you'll know that you're in this healing energy because you won't let it get that far. You'll sort of kind of heal that small fragile ego within by almost kind of being more practical, level-headed, practical-minded, um, very pragmatic, check your emotions at the door, the queen of swords. It's almost like you will go into an internal checklist that will, um, you know how sometimes you, if you're going somewhere and you're kind of very nervous and you're up, like whether it's for an interview or I'm just using that as a rough example, but where you're kind of like all your anxieties are at full tilt. And what I do is I start going through a little checklist that sort of counters my worries and my anxieties. Kind of like if I'm going to the airport and I'm really nervous, it's like, did you pack your, you know, your, do you have your tickets? Check. Okay, do you have the shoes to slip out of when you get into line? Yes. Do you have your ID? Check. Like I put myself through the checklist to kind of bring my anxiety and my worry and my insecurities all and my temperature all down my heart rate. That's what I'm seeing here in the Queen of Swords. That's when you'll know you're really ready to kind of kick your soul contract up a notch. 
So this whole spread for you, Aries, is about, um, you know, how to kind of retrain that part of your ego that tries to keep you small so that you can continue to elevate your soul contract if you so desire. Of course, it's always a choice. Um, and so that's what I have for you. This is really lovely. So you're working on it from the new moon in Virgo, which is a very healing new moon. If you missed my reading, go watch it. And then on to the full moon with the lunar eclipse in the south node in Pisces. That's what we're doing here. Okay, okay. I am taking this to the extended. We're going to kind of look at our king of cups here more deeply. We want to see this person's perception of you, right? What's their perception? Um, what are their feelings for you? What are their intentions toward you? Um, what are they getting from you? What is it? Like, what's the payoff? What are they getting from you? Um, and their physical fulfillment with you, that might be a little more intimate, might not. Like, what's what are they physically getting from you? And where is this connection headed from their point of view? Where is it headed? Okay, so that's what we're doing. The links to the extended are below. You'll notice I said plural because you have option one, two, or three. So please make sure if you just want the one time, one time extended, one and done that lasts for 30 days, that's option two. Option one is a monthly renewal where you get a handful of extendeds and it just renews monthly. So double check that. Okay, and if you've enjoyed this reading and the new decks and the, uh, you know, and you haven't yet, do subscribe below. That's how I get to stay here and continue doing what I absolutely love more than anything else um, other than my daughter and my little, my little kitty Leo. I love doing this, so please do subscribe. It's my only real ask is that you subscribe and it's free. It's just our little energetic exchange. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here is the astrology. King of Cups is Scorpio energy. Um, the magician is, uh, is Mercury, which rules Virgo um, and Gemini as well. Then we have here the death card is more Scorpio. We have the Knight of Swords is Gemini, Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. A lot of Scorpio energy here for you. More Scorpio when the Death Card is out twice. And the Tower is um, Mars, which rules Aries. The Star is Aquarius. Devil is Capricorn. And our beautiful Queen of Swords is Libra. Nice and balanced. That's what I have. Thanks for joining me. I'm headed to the Extended. Bye for now.